This is episode 18, the shower episode. We are here and we are doubling down on the clear glass shower door. Man, the most polarizing topic in all the land, more than politics, more than anything, really. It's a tough one. I mean, I didn't realize glass was see-through until I put it on our shower door. And then the next thing you know, I'm taking a shower and there's a pack of coyotes out there. And I'm like, oh boy, I guess I need to pull the curtain on our bus door. Anyways, guys, we've had it for over a year. We've survived. We're here to talk about it. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Right across this country into this starlight. 12,000 miles, turn back, do it again. No destination, it's just a journey. This is episode 18, the shower episode, all about how we built and eventually you will see rebuilt our shower. This is a good one. Buckle up. First things first, let's show you the shower in its finished state. It didn't get there super easy, so we'll show you that first and kind of explain what happened. The timeline gets a little bit complicated, so we wanted to show you the final form of the shower, how it ended up this week because everything can get a little bit weird with the different tiles that we used. And so we wanted to make sure we showed you what it actually looked like. So now you can follow the story from beginning to end with us. Let's start at the very beginning. It was a rainy day, March 29th, 1986. I was just born. Oh, the beginning of the shower. <laughs> it, was, it was like two weeks ago. Oh. My bad. So a couple of weeks ago, it was finally time to build out the shower, the last major part of this build. So we had to do a lot of things to prepare for that. Let's make sure all these wires are clamped to the wall. Make sure the propane line is secure and is working properly before we cover that stuff up for good. The next major piece to this puzzle was to put in our inset stainless steel shower pan. Now, these shower pans are really special because we actually make and sell these custom shower pans on our website, ourwaytorome.com. You can go on the website under the custom shop. You can actually choose the dimensions of the shower pan. There's little drop down menus. So you can get a custom shower pan for your build. These are made out of stainless steel. They are metal, they are not plastic or fiberglass. So they hold up a lot better to the vibration of a vehicle. These pans have a one inch lip around the rim and then they inset into the floor. You could build it on top of the floor if you want, but in both of our buses, we have inset them into the floor to save a little bit of height. You want to eke out every oh, yeah. vertical inch you can in these buses. So setting the shower pan into the floor does get an inch or two back for you in that shower. The default for these pans is that the drain is placed in the center and it is graded towards the drain so that the water will just drain right out into your plumbing and then your gray water tank. But we needed a custom drain. This is also something that you can order through our website. So we needed it offset just a little bit. We got those measurements and then sent that in with the order. So if you get a custom drain placement, the pan is then graded just to wherever that drain is. So no matter what, the water is just gonna flow right down into your gray water tank. I know it's late in the series, but I do wanna trying to point out it's a good idea to figure your shower out first or early on because you're going to need to figure out exactly the dimensions of where it needs to be and you're not going to want to build up your insulation and subfloor in that spot because that's where the shower pan is going to sit you're just going to have the original flooring there so the pan is sitting on that but it's gonna be inset compared to that layer of insulation and that subfloor. Because this shower pan is inset into the floor, it's kind of designed around our original bus and the teak mat that we have. This was a look that I really was going for in our first bus and it worked out really well. Having the pan set into the floor and then setting the teak mat into the pan it allows you to just stand on the wood so it's not cold on your feet and then the water just goes right through this mat 
down the drain into the gray water tank, you get a lot less standing water. We built a shower pan into our first van and we had a problem with water just kind of standing in different places around the pan. So with this, we've never had that issue. We've been on a lot of different angles and grades and for the most part, it really does just go out the drain into the gray water tank. We've had no problems with that. If you want one of these pans for your own build, you can custom order them right down to the drain place from our website at ourwaytorome.com. You can go to the custom shop. We will link it below and give you all the details of how to go and order. But we have made so many of these shower pans so far. We've sent them all over the country at this point and people have really loved them. We are so proud of this little kind of bus build product that we've created. A few episodes back, we showed you how we cut the walls out of half inch ply for our bathroom. So we had to make a template for all of that. You can go back and watch that episode to see how we did it. But those walls have just kind of been sitting there ever since. Because they're not yet secured to the walls because we were doing work and running wires behind them, we just took the walls out and laid them on top of the FRP board and traced them. FRP board is just really thin plastic. It's so easy to cut. I just do it with a razor blade. And so being able to take the wall out, trace it onto the FRP board, and then just cut it out and have that exact shape was so much easier than in our bus when we did it, where we were trying to do measurements and the walls were already secured. So if you can wait to secure your walls, that is our number one tip, it was 110% easier this time to just be able to trace it. Now we do the FRP board for a few reasons. Number one, it might be a little bit busy to just tile the entire space with all those little tiles. But also at every step of the way, we like to remind ourselves that we are building in a vehicle and you need to consider weight. So by only tiling the back wall, the wall that you see most often, especially walking right into the bus, you can save weight on two walls, which is actually really significant. Now that we had the two side walls traced onto the FRP board, it was all cut out, that was finished, and we set that to the side. It was time to do the back wall. Now this is the wall that is going to get tile, so it is treated completely differently than the two side walls. When you are tiling, you need some sort of backer board. We like to use a foam backer board. This stuff is really cool. It essentially functions the same way as cement board. It is waterproof, but it's easy to cut. It's easy to use. We took our back wall, laid it out on the table and set the go board on top of it. Now we could just trace the shape of that back wall onto the go board. And it's really easy to cut go board. All I had to do was put a little straight edge on it and use a knife blade. It doesn't really get easier than that. And then it was the exact shape that we needed for the back wall. We did need a little bit of a spacer on the back wall because again, these bus walls do have a little bit of a curve to it. Definitely wanna to try to get that to feel solid. If there's a little gap, you gotta do some sort of a spacer so it's not like that. We needed it to be as secure as possible and in one place when we were pushing on it, it was bowing. We can't have that. So we spaced it out and then when we pushed on it, it was completely rigid. So we know that the tile, the mortar, the grout, in the end, all of that will be as secure as it can be in a moving vehicle. The next step was to figure out where we wanted to put our shower head and our faucet handle on the sidewall. So we found out that spot, marked it, and we used a hole saw to cut a spot for the shower head. And we used a jigsaw to cut a hole for the faucet handle to come through. Next up was to actually put the go board in its final place on the back wall. We secured it to the back wall with screws at pretty even intervals, just making sure that it's as secure as possible to that back wall. We also had an extra strip of the go board that we used to extend the top of the tiling area. So on that gap, we put mesh seam tape and also on some of the edges. That leads us to our next step, which is applying the 
waterproof membrane. We like to use Redguard, but there's a wide variety of waterproofing membrane products out there. Redguard is cool because you paint it on and it's bright pink and you know when it's dry because it turns bright red. We do two coats at opposite angles. So one coat goes on up and down, the next coat goes on side to side, and then your whole shower is waterproofed once it has turned bright red. Once the red guard was completely dry, we applied some construction adhesive on the two sidewalls where the FRP board would be going. We used uh, just a scraper to try to put it on very smooth so you didn't get too much of that bubbliness from the glue. And then you put your FRP board on and try to just smooth it out as much as possible. Now that all of this prep work was done, it was time to get to the exciting part, the tile. Oh boy, here we go. Here we go. I picked out a beautiful tile for this shower. I was so excited about it. I thought it would be great. And I picked out matte black penny rounds. Dun dun dun. I had no part of the selection. Drew had no part <laughs> of this selection at all. This was 100% me. So we mixed up our mortar and we like to use this product that's a flex mortar. It just comes from Home Depot. It's from Custom Build Products. And this is the mortar that we've used all three times that we've tiled in vehicles. And it has not failed at all so far. It's supposed to have more flexibility than regular mortar. And so far it really has, we've had no no problems with it. So we mixed up our mortar and it was time to actually get that tile on the wall. The penny rounds come in sheets with a mesh backing. So we put the mortar onto the wall, spreading it in sections and then press the penny rounds on fully in their square mesh backed pieces. Yeah, the fun part is when we started this, we're like, oh man, we got these big old sheets. This will be so easy. It's gonna take no time at all. It was really hard to use tile spacers with these penny rounds because they are round. The tile spacers didn't want to stay in place. So we said, eh, we don't need those tile spacers. So we just put all these penny rounds right back and forth across the wall until it was completely finished. When we were right up against the wall, applying these penny rounds, we're close to it. We're putting them all up on the wall. They looked fine. They looked great. Then we finished the wall and we took a few steps back out of the bus actually and looked at it. Our hearts <laughs> sank because you could see grid lines where one square sheet of penny round met the next sheet. You could, it was, it was like a grid on this wall. It looked so bad. But we said to ourselves, ah, oh, the grout should smooth that over and fix that. No problem. We tried not to panic. Let's yeah. just not, not make any sudden movements. Maybe it won't be so bad in the end once it's grouted and all the fixtures are there mm -hmm. and the floor is in and the door is installed. Let's just not panic. Let's, let's see if it looks better after we install the door. We carried our glass shower door in the bus and we put it up. We noticed it was a little bit tight closing, so we made a couple minor adjustments. This is where I'd like to point out that before you even start your shower build, I think you should pick your door out and whatever that inch distance is, build your framing around that because you're going to have a lot harder time trying to fit a door into like a, no, it's 27 and three quarters inch or something weird. These are glass shower doors. You're not going to cut the glass down and they're going to be made, you know, to certain standards. If you're using a curtain or like one of those kind of roll, roll up ones, mm -hmm. you'll be fine. That's not going to be an issue. But if you're using a solid door, you're going to want to size that and then build your shower walls around that. 
After the shower door was in place, we actually installed the fixtures themselves, the shower head and the handle. We also put some trim up on the bottom of the shower and along the ceiling, just to kind of make things cohesive and bring it all together. The door was installed and it was really bringing the whole space together. It was starting to look like how it was gonna look in the end, but that tile. Oh boy, that tile. We were still looking at it and going, do you see grid lines? I see grid lines. Maybe it's just the mortar behind the tile. It can't, it can't be actual grid lines. That would be crazy. Well, let's get that grout on there and see what happens. Yeah, it had to be better after we grouted it. It had to be. Yeah, it'll smooth it out, make it more cohesive. Mm -hmm. Now filled with hope and excitement, we started our grout so ready for the grout to just fix all our problems. Yeah, of course. So we chose Ardex FL High Performance. You can do it. Polymer modified. Yep. Sanded grout. Carry the one X times Y equal. Yeah, that sounds like yeah. the right name. Yeah, that's the one. nice short name. We chose this grout because it is specifically formulated for flexibility and that's what you want when you're tiling in a vehicle. You want those tiles to be able to flex without cracking the mortar or the grout. We cannot speak to the longevity of this product because it is our very first time using it, but it gives us really high hope that it is formulated specifically for that flexibility. We've seen a few other bus lifers and van lifers talking about this grout and they've had really good things to say and it's held up really well for them. So we're hopeful that it'll work here too. The grout was spread over the tiles with the grout float. It's a beautiful moment. It's filling all the cracks and the gaps. Mm -hmm. You're wiping it off with the sponge, a million buckets of water. You're wiping the grout off. You polish off the haze and you step back and look at your finished product. And it was ba -ba -da! horrible. You it were expecting that to do and it's more <laughs> of a <laughs> <laughs> It was bad. It was like, a checkerboard. It was yeah. it was so bad. And you'll see in the footage here that it was just like a it complete was not grid. Good. It was really, really bad. So now we're faced with the dilemma of what the heck do we do with this wall? <sighs> There's only one thing you can do. We came to the decision that we were so proud of the rest of this bus and we were not proud of this tile. No. It is a very small section in relation to the rest of the bus, in relation to a usual bathroom. You know, it's not like we tiled a whole bathroom in this stuff. It was a very small section of one wall of the bathroom. So we decided it was worth a do-over. Yeah, I mean, it's the first thing you see when you come in the bus. You have a glass shower door that, you know, the, the highly controversial glass shower door. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you see, it's not like it's hidden in the back in a corner and you're only in there if you're showering. It's like everyone sees that and it needs to look good. So with our pride hurt, we woke up the next morning and ripped all those tiles off the wall. With a big smile on our face. Big smile. Use that crowbar and I took out all my tile aggression on those little penny rounds. Luckily they came off the wall yeah. really easily. I think it took all of 10 minutes to get those tiles off the wall. I was concerned that it would be damaging the other walls and that didn't happen so we're good on that. That was relief. Once we had all those tiles off, we went and we got another piece of the foam backer board. This stuff is not expensive. I think it was maybe 20 bucks oh, yeah, for cheap. a three by five sheet of it. So we were back where we started, ready for round two. And that's when we found fish scale tiles or mermaid tiles, scallop tiles, whatever you want to call them. They are really cool. We've had our eye on these tiles for years actually. And so we thought that now after this horrible tile defeat, the only thing that could save us was those fish scale tiles. Yeah, I mean, I think the tiles are awesome. I was a little surprised you didn't go with something real simple after the debacle, like go just big some or go big home. rectangles like, like ours. The shape of these tiles is challenging. It was easier to apply them in some ways, but in other ways, it was a lot harder because there is no straight edge on these tiles. It's all curves. It was really hard to cut them. So obviously I damaged more than a few tiles figuring this out, but 
I got kind of a system down with the little scoring thing. I had to kind of hold it in place because once again, these aren't, that's made for like big square tiles, I think. So I had to hold it so it was square on the line you're trying to cut and then had to cut it just right to fit on the side pieces on the wall. It was a little tricky. Working pretty quickly, we got them all positioned on the wall. It was a lot easier to use the 1 8 inch tile spacers. That made it so much easier to apply these tiles and to ensure that they were exactly even. The biggest thing that you can do to help yourself while installing these tiles, or really any tiles, is to mark your center line mm -hmm. on the wall that you're tiling and mark a few horizontal lines as well so that as you go up the wall you can make sure that you're not drifting to one side or the other or that one side isn't lower than the other side just make sure that you're square at all points and use those tile spacers they're there to help you yeah you really with this kind of tile it being rounded at the joints like you could easily kind of just slide drift one way when it's rectangle it's you're just going to notice that pretty quickly with this. It's like you definitely got to keep on every line and make sure it's good and just take your time. Once the tile was all up the wall, we pulled out the tile spacers and let the mortar dry. While we were letting it dry, we had to extend the cedar ceiling down to meet the tile. And this was a little funky because there's a crazy angle going on. So it took a bit of time to actually get these angles completely right. But once we did and we put them all into place, there was one tiny piece that had to go along yeah. the ceiling. It extended the ceiling down to meet the tile and that really gave it a nice finished look. And then it was time for grout. The big reveal, grout is the moment that makes all the tile pop. It's mm -hmm. the final step. We put the grout on, spread it all over the tiles with the grout float, and then wiped it all down with a sponge, polished it with rags, and it looked incredible. Yeah, immediately it looked great. Huge relief. Even before you're done cleaning it off, you could tell it's gonna look so nice. I grout all the way to the edges of the wall, but you don't want the grout to stay right in the corners because that will be your weakest point. If there's any shifting, which there will be because it's a bus, that is where your grout is gonna crack, is in those corners and seams. So I like to grout all the way to the edge and then use a screwdriver to go down and clean out the seam. That way you get a nice clean line, but there's no grout rubbing on the wall next to it. Then once the grout is completely dry, I take caulk and I go into that seam and I just caulk it, swipe it with my finger. It matches the grout, but now there's some flexibility in that seam and hopefully your grout won't crack. We took a few steps back from the wall cause you know, that's what got us before. And it was just beautiful from top to bottom, from side to side, it was just perfect. I loved it so much and you can tell by your gut reaction, how you really feel about something, like in a split second, do you like it, do you not like it? And immediately I just loved it, yeah. and Drew loved it, and we just great. stood there staring at it for like, a long wow, time. Wow, I just wanna keep looking at it, it looks so good. <laughs> it's beautiful, we, we really like it, and so now we are as proud of that bathroom as we are of the rest of the bus. The final step for this bathroom was to caulk all of the trim, edges, seams, make sure that everything is waterproof and sealed because, you know, it is a shower. Yeah. There will be water in there. The last step was to seal the cedar ceiling. Whoa. Seal the cedar ceiling. Seal the cedar ceiling. Try saying that 75 times. We like to seal the seams instead of coating the entire thing in a sealant because that would change the look of the ceiling and then it wouldn't be cohesive with the rest of the bus. So if you just take a clear caulk and you put it in the seams of each of the planks, it'll then hopefully stop some moisture from getting trapped up in the ceiling. We also use this clear caulk around the edges of the puck light, just kind of pull it down, put some caulk around the edge and push it back up. Then with all 
all of these different sealants and caulks and waterproofing methods. Yeah. The entire bathroom is finished. It is waterproof. It is ready to go. Yay. We like to include a Thetford cassette toilet in these builds. We had a black water tank in our first van and it was horrible. We ended up ripping it out. We hated it so much. So we like these Thetford cassette toilets and this is what we're including in this bus. There is no installation for this toilet. You just take it out of the box and you set it into the bathroom. We like that it is movable because you can take it out to shower and then you have a full shower stall mm -hmm. without the toilet in there. It's really easy to use. It's easy to clean. It's easy to find places to dump it. It's what we've used for years. All we had to do was just set it into the bathroom and that was that. Well, we hope you have enjoyed this epic journey through despair and triumph of the shower and I think it looks amazing. I hope everyone enjoys it. We hope that your bathroom build is not this tumultuous. We hope you can learn <laughs> from our mistakes. We've seen a lot of good penny round installations, but we didn't do it. No. We love the fish scale tiles. We think it matches the rest of the bus perfectly. And it does feel really fancy and kind of high end. It doesn't feel like you're in a bus when you're in there. Yeah, it looks really good. It took more than one try, but a lot of things take more than one try on these builds. So if you're in that struggle with something on your bus right now or van or whatever it is, don't feel bad. This happens, honestly, it happens a lot, yes. especially if it's your first time. Hang in there. We hope that your bathroom build goes way smoother than ours did. Let us know what you think of the bathroom in the comments section below. Do all those things you do on the internet. Later.